Superheroes, a new historical series hosted by me, Dimisani Washington. We will explore the powerful and often overlooked contributions of black historical figures. Each episode will focus on a different figure from the days of King Solomon hosting the Queen of Sheba to modern times, highlighting their achievements and the challenges they face. Whether it's Harriet Tubman leading enslaved people to freedom on the Underground Railroad, or Martin Luther King Jr. fighting for civil rights in the 1960s, superheroes will showcase the incredible strength and resilience of black people throughout history. Through the lens of these superheroes, we will reveal the ways in which these men and women triumph against the odds time and time again, and delve into how that inspired the spirit that still continues today. Our forebears did not triumph over all they faced defying impossible odds for us to stand here and call ourselves victims. We, descended from superheroes, Negro spirituals are some of the greatest contributions to American music, and one of the greatest spirituals of all time is Lift Every Voice and Sing, written as a poem by James Weldon Johnson in 1899. James Weldon Johnson was a civil rights activist, an attorney, the first black man to pass the Florida State Bar. He was also one of the figures who laid the groundwork for the Harlem Renaissance. He was a principal of Stanton School in Florida, and he wrote the song in honor of Abraham Lincoln's birthday. And the first time that it was actually performed, he wrote it as a poem. His brother wrote it as music. It was performed for Booker T. Washington, who was speaking at the school. The song has endured all of this time and has been a time of a North Star within the black, particularly religious community. The song is often not known outside of smaller circles, so you really need to know it. Whether you're black American or whoever you are as an American, the song is so important. One of the most important, if not the granddaddy of all of the Negro spirituals. Just a couple of years ago, it was performed in the NBA's uh, All-Star Game, I believe, and NFL I, sometime during the Super Bowl. It, it, it became a controversial political discussion, but it was never a political song. It was always deeply spiritual, deeply religious, and it was a prayer a prayer of thanks to God and a prayer that God help the black folks who've been released from bondage from generation to generation to remember his faithfulness. It's a song that everyone needs to know. Black American, just American, because the, the lyrics are prophetic and they speak even today. Written in three stanzas, right? First one is a call to worship and prayer. The second one is a real reflection of the past. And the third one is actually one of a prayer. It, it's directly talking to God. And here's why you need to know it, because the lyrics are so powerful and prophetic today. It starts with, Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Again, 1899, they're singing with the songs and the melody of liberty, right? Not a perfect freedom, but a freedom for which they've longed for. It goes on. Let our rejoicing arise, high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Again, it's a call to worship and a call to prayer. But what you also see is a contrast about what's the hope of the future pitted against what has been a gloomy, difficult past. The bridge, sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. This is where he introduces both of those contrasts. The dark past has taught us, but the present, the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. James Weldon Johnson is well aware of the fact that though there is freedom, there's much work to do. It's not rose-colored glasses, but he's actually saying we're really thankful for where we are, and he's speaking for the black community. This song actually was adopted by the NAACP in 1919 as its anthem. That second stanza to this day is still somewhat emotional for me because he then begins to reflect, as I said here. He says, Stony the road we trod, 
bit of a chastening rod felt in the days when hope unborn had died. He's talking about the path of centuries of slavery and now through this civil war and not even 40 years removed from that civil war, hope unborn had died. Whenever I hear those lyrics, my son and I often talk about the fact, the eugenics that were actually used against black Americans, hope unborn died, aborting the hope even before it had an opportunity to live, having to live through that reality. Yet with a steady beat, had not our weary feet come to the place for which our father sighed. Our father sighed and longed for what place? Again, 1899, the turn of the century, sighed for this place of freedom. Sighed, looked ahead from the 1600s through the 1800s, looking ahead to this moment in time. And you have a black community that had been formerly enslaved emerging from this place and coming into a place of literacy, coming into a place of home ownership, business ownership. This is happening and this is real. And then here in this bridge, it's just so amazing the way he puts these lyrics here. We have come over a way that with tears have been watered. We have come treading the path through the blood of the slaughters. I remember singing this in church as a little kid. And whenever we come to this part, the song wasn't really broken down, didn't really understand it. It seemed so awkward. It's like, I mean, it was a happy song at first, right? And then all of a sudden, talk about the blood of the slaughtered. Not just the enslaved, the millions who even died, even in the Middle Passage, even before they reached the new land, even before they reached these shores. He's remembering it, but he's remembering it from a purpose because he says from there, the last word is slaughtered. The very next word is out of the gloomy past. Till now we stand at last where the white gleam of our bright star is cast. Are you kidding me? He literally goes from slaughtered to out of the gloomy past. Literally, where the white gleam of our bright star. This is 1899, future so bright, gotta wear shades. He literally says from the blood of the slaughtered, now we've come and the future for us is so amazing, it's beaming with energy. This was the hope. Again, a, a, a nuance, a, a recognizing of what had happened and where we are in this moment. That sets up here for the last stanza, which starts with God of our weary years. And one of the main things that you have to understand about the song that it's very spiritual, very religious, not religious in a, in a restrictive sort of way, but they're singing to God and to specifically the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'll prove it to you. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on the way. This whole stanza is to God. God who has by thy might led us into the light, Keep us forever in thy path, we pray. This is a prayer to God who has now just given victory, freedom to black Americans. Don't let us forget you. It is a, a hearkening back to when Moses told the children of Israel in the wilderness. And when you get to the land, you live in houses you did not build and you drink from wells you did not dig. Here are black leaders telling newly freed black people, do not forget the God who brought you out. And then here he says, why? Lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met thee met you, saw you move for us in the midst of depression, in the midst of sadness, slaughtering slavery. Lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. A direct reference to Jeremiah 51. Wine of the world. What is he talking about? Jeremiah tells the Judean exiles that when you are delivered out of Babylon, come all the way out and don't be drunk with her wine. In the Christian Bible, the text, Revelation, it talks about the same thing. Come out of Babylon, Babylon is fallen. It's a hearkening even to Psalm 137. How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? You have the black elders reminding the people, it's God who brought you out. So lest our feet stray from that place where we met you, 
lest our hearts drunk with the wine of what of the wine of, of a of a nation of a world that doesn't know God or love God. He's telling them, remember that God. And then it ends with shadow beneath thy hand. May we forever stand true to our God, true to our native land. True story. When I did this song, 18, 19 years old, I'm in San Francisco, I'm from California, and we were having a special event, and I was going to, I, 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 my job was to kind of do the song as an intro to the big event, right? And so I'm with the choir, with the group, and I'm thinking, yeah, I've heard the song all my life, it doesn't really resonate, because I don't really understand it at that time in my young life, right? So I'm going, oh yeah, it's kind of long, we'll take out that second stanza, let's do the last one, I'll never forget it to this day. One of the pastors was there, and when I made the announcement, we're gonna do the two stanzas, he said, you're cheaper than the hymn. I was like, oh, oh, and I didn't realize it. I just thought it just got a mean, cantankerous guy. And as I got older, I realized it was about him being mean, saying you can't do the song with one or two. Say, if you're going to do the song, do the whole thing, do the whole thing. Because when you come to this prayer part, true to our God, true to our native land, it's talking about we're born in this soil, black Americans having helped build this nation. And so God, may we forever stand true to you, true to our native land. This song needs to be known, not just by black Americans, but by Americans. So the next time you hear it, the next time you hear it sung, the next time the NBA does it, even for the all-star game, I want you to think about the lyrics, think about what's being said, and let it inspire you.